You know, there's a number of things that people can be doing through the five essentials of max living to make sure that your brain is healthy and strong. And it has become so much more prevalent now that we need to take care of our brain because we see so much cognitive decline. You know, it's very, very scary that I think one in two people show some very serious signs of decline over the age of 80 or 85 that can include Alzheimer's disease. Um, we even start to see about one in eight people start to experience things like memory loss and difficulties even over the age of 60. So it's very important that we want to start taking care of the brain at a young age. But at the same time, if you've already started to experience some symptoms of you know, forgetfulness or um, uh, um, heaven forbid, signs of dementia, Alzheimer's, any of these things, there are ways to take care of yourself as best as possible from a very natural perspective. So we want to talk about some of the vitamins and supplements that we know can indeed play a, a very, very helpful role, uh, ones that you can certainly consult with your Max Living doctor that much further. A couple things we would look at is, you know, I've always been a big proponent of getting in the right ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. And you know, nowadays people are typically getting about a ratio of 50 to 1 omega-6s to omega-3s. So you know, I think it's very important that you're getting in enough omega-3s to balance that out. Now, no one knows for sure, but it is believed that in our ancestral times that our ancestors would have consumed more like a ratio of 1 to 1. <laughs> or maybe it might have been maybe three or four to one omega-6 to omega-3s. But we do know that the brain thrives better at those, at those lower levels. Um, unfortunately, now with these ratios excessively high with a lot of processed vegetable oil in the diets and that type of thing, it's very, very key that you, you know, build up the omega-3 intake into the body. But it doesn't mean that omega-6s are bad. I mean, omega-6s obviously are here for a reason. They do play a role in your body. Uh, you do need the role of omega-6s, but they got to be the good omega-6s and have to be non-denatured. So certainly looking at a quality omega. Obviously, Max Living Care is an optimal omega, which helps you get closer to that ratio. And there may be some people who may just need to boost exclusively with omega-3s if the ratios are too far off or if you've had a history of, um, you know, uh, uh, depression or ADHD or some type of difficulty where we'd like to see things function and fire better in the brain. So definitely looking at omega intakes, that's huge. Next thing we talk about is CoQ10, vital for energy. And it has indeed been shown that in studies that CoQ10 does prevent some, it, I shouldn't say that it prevents neurodegeneration, but it has some guarded impact against neurodegeneration. Obviously, you've got to look at the whole picture when, you, when it comes to your health, but taking CoQ10 is vital for energy, something we don't think about a whole heck of a lot. Sometimes you get CoQ10 in a multivitamin supplement. If you don't, certainly it is uh, very vital for energy and brain function can be taken on its own. Uh, the next thing I think is key to look at is B vitamins. Again, often available, you can get enough B vitamins through a quality multivitamin, uh, or if necessary, you may find that you do better by supplementing with additional B vitamins. Uh, I can certainly say experience, experientially as a chiropractor, I've worked with a number of clients who've had a history of depression. And when they supplement with more B vitamins, they find that they do a lot better, they sleep better, their symptoms are greatly reduced. Um, there's also a lot of clinical uh, studies looking at the role of B vitamin depletion um, and how that is connected with things like depression and other associated disorders. So do look at B vitamins, not only as a preventative basis and say something like a multivitamin and or your foods, of course, but perhaps even a boost if you've dealt with some issues. Vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is just vital for everyone. I mean, vitamin, vitamin D3, pretty much when you look at it, is the vitamin that you should get from the sun. And if you really want to really want to break it down, it's not a vitamin you get from the sun, but it's certainly activated when those UV rays uh, touch, you know, get to your skin. And vitamin D3 really is a pro-hormone that is involved in just about every immune process in your body. And that's why it's so vital. We've also seen some benefit with vitamin D3 with certain individuals who's had, who have had difficulty with cognitive decline. When you're taking vitamin D3, we do recognize that in the conventional world, the standards are quite low. You know, we'll often hear about people needing to take, you know, 400 units of vitamin D3 on a daily basis or 1,000 units on a daily basis. Most in the natural health world, though, would recognize that in order to get your body's own levels of maintained vitamin D3 to a level where you're doing much better, um, people typically need to take between five and 10,000 units a day. Now it is individual. Certainly people could go get tested and find out, you know, what are my vitamin D levels that I'm taking in. The test that somebody would get done has to be very, very specific. It's actually called a 25 OH D3 test 
But that's how you can find out just exactly how much vitamin D3 you need to take. But at a bare minimum nowadays, natural health experts would say at least be doing 5,000 units a day. And in those winter months, if you're not getting as much sun exposure, people are probably typically gonna do better with 10 to 15,000 units a day. But it is certainly individualized. You wanna maintain a good level in your body. And that's not not always just exclusively related to how much you take in. Some people can actually maintain higher level. One tip we would give you, there are cofactors for all of these. I mean, certainly there's cofactors for vitamin D3. People ask about vitamin K2. Well, you know what? There's vitamin K2, there's manganese, there's boron. There's a number of cofactors that uh, uh, contribute to the proper functioning of vitamin D3 in your body. Uh, What I learned from a, a great mentor years ago is that raw spinach has all of them. You know, so I'd want to be getting in vitamin D3 on a regular basis. If you're getting it in any type of supplement form, try to get it where there's no, no excipients, no additives. Try to get in those five to 10,000 units all in one supplement as well so you don't have to take you know, handfuls of supplements. Uh, but also raw spinach every day will benefit uh, the use of vitamin D3 in your body. And also, we always come back to a perspective on detox. You know, uh, I certainly, I, I dealt with severe mercury toxicity years ago that was actually discovered by a lab. Uh, you know, so my mercury levels were... Uh, Uh, 10 times higher than what was considered acceptable. So I started doing a lot of research into toxicity and certainly in my own case, mercury poisoning. You know, there's there's studies out there that that show that, you know, mercury does cause brain neuron degeneration. You know, uh, that one study was done actually by the uh, Department of Medicine at the University of Calgary. You know, so this is stuff that is not just health food store conversation, but it is known and respected at the university level that toxicity can cause neurodegeneration, in, in, uh, including the nerves in your brain. So I'm a big fan of some level of perpetual detox. Obviously, Max Lilling has always placed an emphasis on essential number five of minimizing toxicity so you don't have as many pollutants getting in the body. And that's why it's so vital that vitamins and supplements, they don't have a lot of excipients and additives and you know, excess sugar and fillers and colorings that you just don't need. But I'd also say this too, uh, none of us are, uh, none of us probably led, led a life where we didn't get any pollution in the body. Even when we try very, very hard, uh, we certainly know that the air is polluted. Uh, certainly water can contain chemicals. One thing that's just very real and scary is I've lately seen how a number of city uh, water supplies, uh, w- regardless of what your position is on consuming chlorine or, or fluoride, uh, but a lot of city water supplies now have residues from medications that people have flushed down the toilet, including birth control pills. You know, So absolutely, I want to take an approach, in addition to a multivitamin, which gets the nutrients in. I wanna do everything I possibly can to make sure that I'm getting waste out of my system. And really, detox is not a fad. Your body has a liver, you have kidneys, you have a gut. Your body's always trying to detoxify. I mean, clearly the body was designed knowing that it would come in contact with environmental pollutants and that your body would have to get rid of those things. But there are ways that we can benefit the body and increase its detoxification potential by really doing two things, really working to increase your body's levels of glutathione, which is your body's number one antioxidant. It recycles all the other antioxidants in the body. And then the other part of the two-step process is making sure that you're clearing any pollutants out of the body. And that's, that's where a benefit of uh, these earthly elements like activated charcoal, um, or even sometimes we've seen people use things like diatomaceous earth, or we've seen people use things like bentonite clay. All of these things, they're magnetic essentially to environmental pollutants and waste, and they can help to pull those out of the body. Obviously the ML detox system um, addresses each of those areas. And there could be other ways that you can look at detoxing as well on a daily basis too. I mean, I'm a big fan of all the things that would excel, all the things that would boost your glutathione levels. So exercise and getting a glutathione from raw vegetables as well. When you cook vegetables, you deplenish your levels of glutathione. That's not good, certainly doesn't help with detoxification. So good raw foods in every meal are wise as well. So this isn't gonna solve every person's brain issue, but they are key ways that you can look at preventing degeneration long-term. If you have further questions, check in with your Max Living doctor.